much, Megan, Nicole, the entire WAM crew for welcoming Style Crew in um, and hosting this event with us. Um, so for a lot of you on the call, um, I know it's a mix between new ambassadors. Um, maybe some of the people on the call have been a part of Style Crew, but have taken a little bit of a break. So we wanted to kick off before we jump into speaking directly with some of our panelists today. We wanted to just do a quick recap on Style Crew and give you a little bit of an insight into what we've been up to since the beginning of this year. Um, so for those of you who don't know what Style Crew is, it is an elective program that's comprised of our own Macy's colleagues. So anyone who's paid with a Macy's paycheck can join this program. Um, and we basically have people that are joining their first day walking in as an intern. Um, all the way up to senior leadership is a part of this program, um, a mix of store colleagues as well as corporate colleagues, colleagues that work in the field. Um, it's basically anybody who's interested in sharing the latest trends in fashion beauty home through shoppable video and shoppable photo um, that they curate and post on our style crew portal. Um, many of the ambassadors, you might be looking at their content on Instagram. We also share the content through um, social media. And if you're searching by hashtag Macy's Style Crew or hashtag I work at Macy's, um, those are two hashtags that we use for the program. Um, the cool thing about Style Crew, um, you can earn cash um, prizes. There is a monthly incentive that our, that our ambassadors are trying to hit um, each month. We also do gifted product. We have special access to different photo shoot opportunities, special events for the program, fun, cool, gifted swag product. Um, as I mentioned in the chat, we'll be hosting a contest next month to win these cool tie-dye t-shirts. Um, to date, we have a little over 3,200 colleagues that are in Style Crew. And again, this is across the organization in all different roles. And um, we're in all states as well for Macy's. So super exciting. Um, you know, if you're if this presentation, because it's very brief, um, piques your curiosity and you have more questions, we do have a dedicated email inbox, um, Macy's Style Crew at Macy's.com. Can always shoot us questions there. Adrian and I both have access to that inbox. We look at it daily, multiple times a day. Um, I'll also pop into the chat, or Adrian, if you have a second to pop into the chat, um, the link below here to sign up for Macy's Style Crew. So if you're not yet a part of it, but hopefully we inspire you today. Um, please join us. Again, if you're paid with a Macy's paycheck, you can be a part of this program. I'm going to go on to the next slide. <laughs> so one of the top questions that we get from our ambassadors are, how can you earn or what are the perks with Style Crew? Um, so the cool thing about it is that, you know, for any content that you're creating on the Style Crew plat platform, you can earn incentives for the content that you create. You can earn up to $500 a month um, for any content that you're posting on your Style Crew Ambassador link. So when you sign up for the program, you'll get your own account access. Um, you log in, you upload any of your video or photo content, um, and we pay out based on a unique view. Um, and then as you can see, we have a tiered system. So if you have a good combination of unique views in a calendar month and you also make sales, you'll go higher up in the tiered payout. So you can get paid up to 30 cents per view with a combination of sales. Um, that will be showing up in your monthly paychecks. If you look at your pay stub, there is a line item at the bottom that says style crew incentive. Um, that's where all of your money for the program and all of your contribution is saved under. So if you're ever curious, you can take a peek at your pay stubs. Um, another cool advantage um, that we have with our Style Crew program is we offer spot cash prizes for certain contests. So um, once you join the program, you'll be um, sent emails every Friday with like a Style Crew newsletter where we announce fun contests. Um, maybe photo shoot opportunities. We'll talk about free gifted product. Um, we also will host monthly contests for cash prizes. So if you're interested in participating in those contests and you're one of those lucky winners, um, you could earn cash on the spot, which is great. Um, and then the other cool thing that our ambassadors are loving um, is this opportunity to work with certain vendors to receive free gifted product um, in in um, excuse me, in exchange, the ambassador will create their own photo or video content, post it up on the Style Crew portal, and then they get to keep product. 
Um, so that's really cool. We've partnered with everybody from, you know, beauty brands to ready to wear shoes, handbags, um, jewelry. So really every single product category has come through Style Crew. A lot of our vendors like to use it for their newest product offerings. So Style Crew sometimes is the exclusive first peek at certain product launches. So that's super exciting. Um, and then one thing that we're just starting to tap into is working directly with brands on creating their ad content. They So some of the brands want style crew ambassadors to create ad content to appear up on banners on Macy's.com. So again, if you, you know, really love creating social content and you want to be a part of that, um, be on the lookout in those newsletters. That's where we will announce any sort of vendor partnership. Um, and you can sign up if you are if you are interested in participating. And then last but not least, um, yep, you were you were good, Megan. You can go to the next slide. Um, and then last but not least, um, our beloved filmmaker series is back. I know um, in 2019, our ambassadors were loving the fact that they got to shoot with professional photographers and videographers at Macy's. Um, we had to pause this during furlough um, and during the pandemic um, just because social distancing was um, advised and on these shoots, as some of you know, um, there's a lot of people, there's a lot going on. Um, we are back. Um, we've been back since the beginning of this year. Um, so again, another opportunity to sign up. Um, we announced these in the newsletter. We've been, we've been going to um, some cool offsite locations. We just shot yesterday at a fun private residence with a pool. Um, so be on the lookout in the next two weeks for that content to appear. So um, that's kind of everything that has been happening with Style Crew. Um, I think there's one more slide. So before we jump into the panelists, um, one kind of exciting thing that we wanted to do, hopefully we are inspiring you on this call to want to create fun summer, summer content. We are going to raffle off these prizes that are shown here on this PowerPoint. Um, you can be one of the lucky winners and hopefully you'll want to create some of your own content with some of these fun summer products. Um, your attendance on the call today will be your entry into the raffle. Um, so we'll be reaching out to you after the call if you're one of our lucky winners. So good luck everybody. And I'm going to switch gears over. Adrian, I don't know if you want to try the panel or I can hop into it. Um. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> oh, perfect. Let me then, I'm on this call two, two different ways. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, Megan, we can take this presentation down. Um, panelists, if you guys wanna turn your cameras on. Um, Adrienne Vizcara is also um, part of Style Crew, so I'm gonna let her introduce herself and introduce all of our panelists on today's call. So thank you guys and I will be with you guys again at the end. Awesome. Thank you, Nora. So hey, everyone. My name is Adrian. I am operations for Style Crew, um, finance, logistics. Uh, so Nora and I <laughs> handle Style Crew together, but I want to introduce you guys to our panelists today. Um, how long you've been at Macy's, what inspired you to join Style Crew, and what do you currently do at Macy's? So let's start with Jill. Hi guys, so I'm Jill Ryland. I have been at Macy's. I just celebrated my 14th anniversary. So like I officially have an adolescent teenager for my career. Um, I, for the most part, have always been in buying. I've done um, a stint in digital as a digital merchant a while back when we became Omni. I've done field planning. I was our plus size influencer um, and I've been back in buying now for like three years. Um, I've spent a lot of time in ready to wear, um, but I've also been in cosmetics, shoes, handbags. Um, yeah, cosmetics, shoes, handbags and ready to wear. So a varied background. My passion is buying though. I love product. Um, I'm currently the plus size buyer for contemporary plus size, um, junior plus size, and active in plus size. Um, so yeah, what else did you want to know? Sorry, Adrian. <laughs> um, what inspired you to join Style Crew? 
Oh, well, at the time that I heard about Style Crew, I was our plus size influencer, which was not social media influencer, but sort of almost like a plus size consultant for Macy's. Um, and I wanted to share all the amazing plus size things we had at Macy's because as a plus size shopper, I never even knew growing up that like Macy's even had plus. So as we were building new brands and fun, cool new things, I got really excited. And so I created a separate Instagram from my own personal Instagram, um, Talk Curvy to Me, to showcase a lot of the fun plus size things we had at Macy's. And then it just sort of snowballed into all of the great things we had at Macy's. So cool. Yeah, I love I love following your stories and we'll get more into that later. But okay. Natalie McNeil, tell us a little bit about yourself. How long you've been at Macy's? What inspired you to be in Style Crew? And what do you currently do at Macy's? OK, so hi. Yes, my name is Natalie McNeil. Um, I've been with Macy's for three years. I've been in the product testing department, so I'm a testing analyst for ready to wear for Charter Club and JM Collection. So basically that means I just make sure we have all the product testing and we follow all the legal guidelines for our private brands so that they can be shoppable for all of our customers. Um, and I, what inspired me to join Style Crew was I joined as soon as I started working at Macy's because it was a new program. So that's part of the reason it was really exciting. I was like, oh, this is something new. I already love social media. Um, I went to school for public relations, so it kind of aligns with what I went to school for. And I'm able to integrate what I do in product testing with my PR degree. So I thought that was really exciting. So it's just definitely something that was new and innovative that I really was excited to be a part of. So cool. Yes, it's been awesome watching you like grow within the program as well. Uh, Michelle, let us know a little bit about your um, position, your time with Macy's Style Crew, and what do you do at Macy's and anything else? Awesome. All right. Hi, guys. My name is Michelle Coons. Um, I've been with Macy's, I think, for almost three and a half years now. Um, I actually started in the EDP program in um, the men's buying team and backstage and then transitioned to like regular Macy's, if we want to call it that, um, to men's digital over there and then moved to um, women's shoes where I did buying. And then I've actually um, just recently transitioned into my new role where I'm an uh, associate content editor in the fashion office focused on men's kids in home and really focused on social as well. So I kind of found a way to really bring in my passion for what I was doing in Style Crew into kind of my full-time role right now, which I think is really awesome. Um, let's see, I started Style Crew like Natalie right when I started at the company. It was super fresh, exciting. Um, honestly, it was just amazing that I kind of had perfect timing there. But um, because, you know, we kind of got to see from the beginning, really got to see the program evolve and, and all the different phases there. So I've gotten to work with the film crew like way back in the day when we were still doing that all the way up into working with um, the team in New York and shooting content that way. But um, yeah, it's just it's always been a passion of mine. I love um, also educating the customer and kind of maybe introducing them to things that maybe they didn't consider or know that we had at Macy's. So um, that was kind of what really inspired me to join the program. Cool. Natalia? Hi, everybody. I'm Natalia Serrano, and um, I've been with the company, I think, going on 12 years. So I'm not a teenager yet, but I guess I'm like a tween. Um, <laughs> Um, and I started off here actually as a designer. So I started off as an assistant designer and worked in a bunch of different areas. I started off in um, handbags and small leather goods. And then I ended up um, doing kids. So, which is like an all encompassing world. So I started off doing their fancy and then I did, you know, play and denim, swim, shoes. So like I've touched every FOB, but with through the kids lens. Um, and then I was also an ERG lead and through my work with the ERGs, I actually ended up discovering uh, that I had a passion for diversity and inclusion. And I transitioned over to my team now, which is the retail diversity strategy team. And so what we do is we run the workshop at Macy's, which 
you guys may have heard through, you know, either Wham or Style Crew, because um, we work closely with you guys. Um, and we we align our DNI goals with our retail goals and our business goals. So we oversee um, women and diverse owned spend for the company, um, and serve as liaisons to you know surface up white space opportunity with with those businesses. So that's kind of what I do there, and that's kind of how I got involved with Style Crew. So it's all kind of like tied together. Um, when I came over to the team, I realized how much like product we have from women and diverse owned brands. And so I thought that Style Crew would be a really great way to showcase it because I had been at the company for however many years and I wasn't I wasn't aware that we had this kind of product. So I really wanted to leverage my platform to to you know showcase it to to our customers and to our colleagues because I think you know there's there's a little bit of opportunity there. So that's how I got involved. Very cool. And point taken because I feel like I've learned so much about Macy's product through our ambassadors and through their Instagrams and their pages. I'm like, what? We carry that? I'm buying that. Very cool. Um, okay, so Natalia, how has your content creation changed, evolved during this pandemic virtual phase? So it's it evolved with me, honestly. Like I <laughs> I went from being some I love to travel. And so I did a lot of content around, you know, cool places I was visiting, cool places to eat, and you know, like that kind of a thing. And then that like completely shut down. And I was like, what do I, I guess, I don't know, like, I guess I'm not going to create anything because I don't have anything to say. But then I started creating, I like started this um kind of like, not daily, but every so often, like I, I started counting the days that I was quarantined and what I was doing to like stay sane. And I was, I ended up really connecting nicely with my audience because I think they were going through the same thing of how do I like, stay sane in this new reality and it was really cool to to have that connection I started getting a lot more dms asking me about the recipes I was doing or you know so there was a lot more interaction which I thought was actually really nice but I, I just kept it really authentic to myself you know I I didn't like you know find places to pose or any I was in like sweatpants all the time like my life became you know, the dog park. And so that's what I was supposed to say about. I was I was at the dog park all the time and I started creating content around my dogs and like how cute they were or new toys that I was, you know, or how to like keep them quiet on meetings and, you know, things like that. So I just kept it really authentic and it evolved with me and what I was going through. And it was, it was nice to see that it really resonated with people and they were, you know, really using that interaction to get best practices or share their own best practices. So that's, that was pretty much my journey into dog mom and <laughs> you know, Brooklyn gardener. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Um, Michelle, what about you? What, what have you uh, content creation wise changed during this pandemic virtual phase? Yeah, so it definitely changed a lot for me. I went from, you know, living in Manhattan. I feel like New York was really um, kind of a a popular backdrop that I would use in a lot of my photos. You know, I'd coordinate with my coworkers before going into the office to shoot content or I'd shoot with um, the Macy's team. So I actually ended up moving back home. Um, I thought, you know, started with like a week and then a couple of weeks and then a couple of months. And now it's been about a year and I'm still waiting for us to um, go back into the office. Um, but no, so I moved back home to Florida into my own, uh, hometown, which is very um, kind of like old timey colonial wannabe hipster town. Um, so just complete day and night difference from New York City. And that definitely affected my content. I, I definitely took some time to kind of reevaluate, you know, what I wanted to shoot. I still like to focus heavily on fashion and beauty content, but um, how was I going to shoot it now that I was in a new environment? So I um, actually convinced my mother to become my new photographer. Um, I shoot everything on my phone, basically, because um, I think the quality is just as good as a professional camera. And really, I kind of turned it into a challenge for myself. And I said, uh, my town is called Deland. And I was like, how can I make Deland look like the most epic, like beautiful place ever? And I think it was really about being creative and finding kind of more like hole in the spot, uh, hole in the wall places that I could shoot. So even if it just looked like an unassuming wall or backdrop, or, you know, I have these really kind of kitschy murals in my town. Um, how can I really elevate that and make it editorial? I, I love focusing on editorial content and kind of putting together these crazy looks. So um, if you go on my Instagram, you'll definitely see some of those. But like, for example, I wore this like head to toe purple look. I had these like purple metallic boots on and nobody in my town is wearing that stuff, but I just kind of had to own it and 
um, get my content. And I mean, it's been really amazing. Like people are really shocked that, you know, this content is, is coming out of my town. And um, at the same time, it also kind of became a way a therapy for me during COVID because obviously switching to a completely remote work environment and, and not being around, you know, friends and people that I was living around um, was very difficult. So kind of just trying to make the best of that situation, but it kind of turned into this thing that was bigger than myself. And, um, you know, now my mom has this portfolio of work that we call it all these amazing um, pictures that we've taken together and we've been able to spend time doing that as well. So definitely pivoted, but again, you know, I think it really challenged me in, in all the right ways. That's so awesome to hear. That's an awesome kind of change in plans and how you made the best of it. Um, all right, Jill. So how do you juggle content creation with your workload slash lifestyle? Um, any time management tips or hacks to share with the group? Because during the pandemic, you became a mama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's definitely changed for me you know me and my friends who are also like bloggers would go out on a saturday and shoot like six looks across the city or have our photographer come and we you know go around and shoot looks for like five or six hours now that is not happening um so i honestly like haven't been creating as much content since becoming a mom i think around specifically like fashion and beauty because honestly over maternity leave in a pandemic i was in a nursing bra and like leggings um to be honest and so i think now that i'm sort of like in a routine like penelope my daughter is six months old she's in daycare now i have a little bit more um flexibility with my time now that she's not attached to me all day long um and so um, I'm trying to get back to a schedule that I can shoot a little bit on Saturdays. Like I still have my self-care routine of like I get a manicure pedicure every Saturday because I need that for myself. And so, you know, I just like negotiating like honestly, uh, like the couple life has changed so much to become a family. So negotiating that time with my husband to be like, look, I need this time for myself. because That's when I feel like very creative and I feel very fulfilled doing that type of stuff, like shooting um, with my friends or photographers. So I think it is really balanced. It's definitely a lot less time. Um, but the cool thing is working from home, you know, like showing my outfit of the day for working from home has sort of uh, restarted for me. And I think I'm going to start doing that more often. But yeah, definitely becoming a mom and being limited by the pandemic um, changed my content creation schedule. I shot up until the day I gave birth. I actually like shot the morning I gave birth. Um, I, I shot like a Kiehl's holiday campaign with my husband. So uh, and then I went and had my baby that night. So um, since then, it's definitely changed. But I think it's just really all about balance, like finding an hour here or there. Um, when I get a package in the mail, like sometimes on my lunch break, I'll just go in my bedroom and do like an unboxing because um, the light is best in my bedroom. Um, so, so yeah, I just like changed the way and the time and the type of content that I've been shooting. Got it. Wow. Kudos to you, Jill. That's that's amazing. Um, Natalie McNeil, what about you? Like how I know you had a move. How do you like juggle content creation with work and just your personal life? How does that change or do you have any tips and tricks for that? Um, yeah, it's definitely changed since the pandemic. I would say it uh, kind of similar with Jill. It's been more about balance for me, but in the sense of, OK, I'm kind of listening to what this time and what's going on in the world is kind of telling us to do, which was kind of just to be still and kind of sit. So I did kind of have kind of a, you know, a down in what my creation was because I kind of just didn't have any inspiration, didn't have anywhere to go. So I was just kind of relaxing and chilling and taking it for what it was. Um, so now I feel like I'm kind of getting back into the groove of things and it's kind of created a place where I can kind of relaunch whatever my Instagram or my brand or how I want to promote what we have at Macy's is. So I've had that time to kind of think and see what the new direction I want to go in with my branding is. So that's really how I've used that time to kind of create. And so now I am really looking to find that balance and 
make my new creations with content. So, um, you know, it's more just been, I've still been shopping, but it's more just been of what I've been buying and less of actually showing, you know, like my, my outfits. I focus a lot more on skincare because I've been doing a lot of self-care. So that's really uh, where my, you know, branding has shifted for me. So it's definitely more of, you know, showing the customers what you can buy at Macy's and not necessarily how we're utilizing it right now, but it's other ways to, you know, still shop because I'm always a shopper. That's why I, you know, work at Macy's and work in fashion. I'm always shopping and looking for what's new. So I'm just kind of taking the time to do the research, find new products that we have at Macy's, find new brands and, you know, see how I want to go from there. Very cool. Yeah, I'm with you, Natalie. When uh, the pandemic hit, I was more of like um, stopping, taking a break, chilling. I don't know if that has to do with us both being cancers, but um, <laughs> <I think so>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, awesome. So, Natalia, what kinds of content do you create for Macy's and how do you include your Macy's role into your work? I know you touched a little bit about this before, but um, the workshop at Macy's, how do you create content for it and how do you include your role into it? Yeah, so I'm really fortunate to kind of to be in a role that really aligns with the stuff that I'm really interested in and kind of it really aligns with my personality. So it really facilitates, you know, an, an honest conversation. I always kind of joke around that like, I, at least when, you know, when I was coming up, like, you weren't really supposed to talk about, you know, religion and politics and things like that. And, and my Instagram is very much that, you know, I talk about the, you know, social issues and, and things like that, that are happening. You're very unlikely going to see like how to do a smoky eye by me because I don't know how, but I will tell you about, you know, what's going on and like brands you can support that have, you know, an economic impact on, on the, on communities and things like that. So I've, I've been able to really blend the two worlds and you know we've done a lot of partnerships with style crew actually where we uh, create content that supports workshop at macy's um, vendor so workshop at macy's for those who don't know is macy's um, vendor development program for women in and diverse owned vendors um so we've been able to do a lot of really cool stuff and just showcasing their brands and the great product um and whether people are talking whether i'm or 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 in the collaborations are talking about you know is this is a woman-owned brand or a black-owned brand or or what have you, um, we've just been able to really create some really nice content around it. And so I have I really am very thoughtful about, I don't exclusively post to women and diverse owned vendors, but for the most part I do. And in general, you know, I try to support local businesses or small businesses or diverse owned businesses in that front. So it kind of all aligns. Um, that's not to say it's like exclusive to that because obviously, you know, I live in the world just like anybody <laughs> else, but for the most part, it really aligns nicely because I do kind of try to live that way anyway. Um, and I think that's what really has resonated with, you know, my following. I think they kind of have come to me of like, you know, I get a lot of questions of like, oh, I'm looking for, you know, a, a new coffee to try. And so, you know, things like that, they kind of come to me for recommendations because I think they've realized like I, I've really tried really hard to incorporate that lifestyle into how I go about things. So it's been really interesting to to meld the, you know, my my work, my nine to five into into my lifestyle and then now creating content around it. So I kind of take that approach. Yeah, no, I love it. I love like watching your stories and like having that information behind the product and just it makes it more meaningful. Um, so thank you for that. Um, so this question is for everyone, too. So Michelle, you're next. How do you like what kinds of content do you create for Macy's and how do you include your Macy's role into your work? Yeah, so I would say that, again, my content, I feel like is very editorial. Um, I'm very kind of meticulous and almost scientific about it. I love location scouting, um, putting together the entire look, whether it starts with, you know, a pair of shoes or a handbag or a really great blazer um, and just kind of building from there. I'm also um, very much a color coordinator. I like to coordinate the outfit with the location. So when I talked about um, shooting content around my town, you know, my mom and I, after we would shoot, we would kind of drive around and, and find these really cool places that, again, didn't really look like anything. But I think if you're looking at it from more of a creative lens, it's actually 
um, a really cool place to shoot. So um, yeah, that's kind of how I've evolved my content. I would say on Instagram, which is where I post primarily, um, my feed is kind of where that editorial content is coming in and, and very thought out and planned. But then on my stories where I definitely like to keep it more casual and, and really connect with, you know, my following and, and hear what they're up to and, and share some more products a little bit more candidly that way, um, where I can actually speak to um, why I like it so much. Um, but no, so interesting story now, you know, with my current role, I've been in it, I think coming up on a month now. So I'm definitely, you know, still getting my feet wet and figuring out what this position is going to look like because it is um, new to the company. So really for me, when I started Style Crew, I really joined because, you know, I had the passion for it, of course, but also I looked at Macy's and especially Macy's corporate. And I was like, you know, there's thousands of us, you know, all spread out and it can be really easy to feel, you know, either like a number, of course, on your team, you know, you become very close, but across the organization, I was like, how do I really kind of start developing this personal brand and start to meet more people that are outside of kind of the close group that I'm working with. And so really took that again on as a challenge and just kind of began sharing my love for for fashion and for what the company had, um, especially to the customer. And from there, it just kind of developed naturally. I mean, there were amazing opportunities, especially in the beginning of the program where there weren't really a ton of rules because it was more just let's figure out, you know, what works, what's you know, potential, what could we really do with this program? And I think that was also a really exciting time. And then also seeing it develop now into marketing where we have access to the social team and, and shooting with those um, content creators as well has just been really exciting. So for me, um, I always wanted to find a way, you know, I had like my merchandising life, like my nine to five. And then I had like my style crew after hours kind of life that I was living. And so I've always wanted to find something that would bring them together. And ever since I started at Macy's, um, I was always interested in the fashion office and just kind of the more creative energy that was coming out of there. Um, but then also really wanted to develop into merchandising as well, because I really think that's the foundation of this company. And so that's kind of where I went on my journey and kind of built my roles through digital, through off price and backstage, um, through buying and, and pretty much touched everything else there. Cause I feel like after COVID we do everything. So um, yeah, no, when this opportunity came along, it was amazing because all of the content that I'd been creating and curating with style crew really became my portfolio and kind of my resume when I went after that job. And I think it was easy for them to kind of see the passion that I had and, and kind of show to them that, hey, I'm not technically in the fashion office, but since I've been at Macy's, I've kind of been running my own fashion office and and showcasing the trends that the company has and um, really just showing my point of view with that. And so it really just became natural, you know, once that conversation came up and, and really led me into this role, which ironically is very social focused. So I get to work with a lot of people that, you know, I've already kind of met through Style Crew and already have that relationship there. So yeah, I think if you really want something, if that's kind of what you're going after, um, taking whatever role you're in now or whatever you're doing and just building upon that because you never know when that's going to be kind of the key to get you to the next step. That really is kind of what made the change for me and and, and made the move. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really awesome that all the work that I've been doing with Style Crew, because I love it, has now, you know, organically transitioned into this role. So it feels like a really natural fit. Very cool. Awesome. Very serendipitous. Yes. <laughs> That's really, you know, about. Um, so Jill, uh, again, same question. What kinds of content do you create for Macy's and how do you include your Macy's role into your work? So before I had the baby, <laughs> um, I was doing also like a lot of fashion content. I feel like my grid was probably mostly just like me around the city and great fun plus size outfits that I really loved and um, coordinating accessories from Macy's, like a lot of handbags some fun jewelry. I shot some beauty content because I was really feeling skincare was what I needed to go after because um, I'm 35 now. So skincare is definitely important and I wish it was more important to me earlier. Um, since since having the baby, it's kind of evolved. I think, you know, during pregnancy and uh, like the fourth trimester, as they call it, your first three months with the baby, I was just creating content to really connect with other moms. Like as a first time mom, I was like, I need a village. So I was mostly doing a lot of stories because I feel like during the pandemic, that's where um, my my um, 
oh my God, my audience was engaging more than my grid and I wasn't feeling very inspired to post a lot. So I did a lot of just content and sharing through my stories and it was, you know, a lot of polls asking women what products they were using or what they did with um, their babies and, you know, going through a lot of the issues I had with my babies and just connecting with women. So um how I want to evolve that now that I told you guys, I'm like feeling like I'm coming out of a hole a little bit with the pandemic going away and sort of getting into a schedule with um, being a family. Like um, I want to get back to shooting plus size content again because I am plus size. I'm the buyer for plus size. I feel like I get a very nice marriage of my personal passion with my professional work um, in being the buyer for this area. And we're launching so many new brands and so many amazing things in the plus size world that feel cool and new. And so I want to share that with my audience and share that with the style crew audience as well. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, the, the gifting program that's out there is actually really great because sometimes I even discover new vendors through that when you guys reach out and you're like, hey, there's this opportunity for gifting to create some content with this brand and it's maybe something I hadn't heard of before. So I think that's actually a really good way for ambassadors to learn about new products too because sometimes we, we just like the scope of Macy's is huge. We have hundreds of thousands of pages on Macy's.com and like millions of SKUs across the store. Um, so yeah, I think just evolving with my own life. Like I went from very like me focused content to then very family focused content. And like I said before, I had a personal Instagram and then I had created Talk Curvy to me to sort of share a lot of the great things that Macy's had. And now like managing two Instagram accounts is like no joke. So my Talk Curvy to Me account has really become my personal and my professional life blended together, which I think feels more authentic. Um, and so, you know, using the Macy's lens, but also like the family lens has been a really cool evolution of the content I create. Exactly. I'll, we're all about authenticity here. Um, yeah, a Natalie. fan account <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> Uh, with a little bit of fashion that. peppered in right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, Natalie, same with you. I know like in the beginning you had uh, shown on your Instagram like product testing and product development, which was like so awesome, which I a world like I never even knew just because I was like finance based at Macy's. So um, how do you mesh the two worlds together? So that's definitely still a learning curve where I am now because it was so much easier to do that when we were in the office because um, the product integrity department, we had a test kitchen in the office where I could walk you through a few of the tests that we would do on a regular basis. So like you mentioned, I did post that on my Instagram and that was really something that was engaging and good for my community because they got to engage and be like, oh, wow, that's something I never thought of or I didn't know you could wash a garment this way things like that. We also would go to our testing labs so I could actually show you where the clothes are really tested at and show you the big machinery. And so we haven't done that in a year. So I haven't been able to post any of that information. And luckily I have a washer and dryer, but no one really wants to see me washing my own clothes at home. It's just to me, it's not the same effect <laughs> as being in a testing lab in an office. So that's definitely been something that I have not been posting and doing. Um, on my Instagram. So I've had to pivot and kind of make it more me focused and as in I'm the one who's going to test out the product for you. So I'm going to try the skincare for you or I'm going to wear this shirt and wash it. And if you see me, you know, wearing it again, then, you know, it washes well and it does well. So it's kind of pivoted in that sense where I'm the one who's doing the testing personally for the product. But it's still, you know, I still want people to know that we have good quality product and that I still do my job. It's just remote right now. And hopefully, you know, in the future, we'll still be able to go to testing lab and I can reignite that and do that in a different, you know, a fun way. But for now, it definitely is still a learning curve. I'm the one who's kind of being the test dummy for everyone and like trying the different product and letting you know how, you know, it's going for me. So that's where I am right now. Yeah, that, that's so cool. I mean, I really enjoyed it and I think it's such a like, I would have never thought about it. So it's like, 
thank goodness you like showed us that kind of lens on that, but very cool. Can't wait to see what's in your future for that. Um, OK, so we have about 15 minutes left. We're going to do like a rapid fire round um, for each of you guys. Um, so I'll start with Natalia. How does your personal audience engage with your Macy's style crew content? Um, well, I think, you know, what um, Natalie was saying just now is is really interesting. And I think we, I mean, we all kind of touched on it. I think they kind of come to us as people, especially because we we work at Macy's, right? So like we have a lot of insider knowledge on the brands and, you know, how durable they are, how good they are. You kind of get to test a lot of things. So I've seen them engage with me as um, not an expert because I'm not an expert, but as somebody who's willing to like be the guinea pig and try this out um, and they'll ask a lot of questions. So I do a lot of polls and stuff in my stories too, of like, what do you guys think? Or what are you guys using? Or, you know, have you heard of anything? Or, you know, I have curly hair. So that's something that I find a lot of engagement with too. So I use myself very much as a guinea pig and I'll try, you know, the the new, new brands that are surfacing up um, and serve as, cause I think we see a lot of things of like people posting these things, but you don't really know if they're using it or not. And I think, you know, my, my following knows that I wouldn't post something that I don't actually use or try and I'll give you a very honest review like if it worked one day but then like the next day you know I got like a rash or something crazy you know so I think they they engage that way and they polls are very um at least for my audience that they that seems to be something that is really good you know questions and things like that those um those stickers um and yeah. stories are are really um you know something that they engage with a lot so I would say that's probably um something that I do quite often yeah, totally agree. Um, Michelle, what has been your favorite part about being in the Macy's style crew? Um, so there's definitely a lot I feel like that I could talk about here. And I think going back to just kind of my journey into my current role now and how style crew has affected that is really a big part of that. Um, just all the opportunity and a lot of it you might not know at first because, again, I've been on this journey for over three years now and there's a lot that's happened that I'm like, wow, this is incredible. Like even the fact that I, when I first started at the company was working with a film crew, I was like, this can't be real life. Like I just graduated college. Like how am I shooting with a professional film crew? But um, no, I have to say something a little bit different as well that I'll mention that is really amazing is just the community of people. Um, you know, I think coming from corporate, I obviously think of kind of the New York ambassadors first, because those are the people I used to like physically see there around the office or at events and stuff. But um, I think through COVID and all of us kind of being remote and in different places, I've gotten to connect with some other ambassadors, some of the my stylists kind of just across all the different states to the point where I feel like I have these amazing friends that I've never met in person before. I've never met them physically, but if I were, say, to travel to their state to see them, I could easily, you know, hit them up and be like, hey, let's go do this together. And it would feel natural. It wouldn't feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going to meet a stranger or something. So I think that community aspect of it, people that you'll just organically meet through sharing your content or, again, doing virtual events um, is really a cool and kind of unexpected um, part of the program that I think has just been amazing. Cool. Um, Jill, what has been your favorite product, product category brands to create for Style Crew? I feel like I've created with so many different product categories. And honestly, I really like thought about this. I think it's coats. Like I love outerwear. And also I love shooting coats because it's cold outside. Like shooting a bunch of different outfits when it's a thousand degrees outside is terrible, but shooting outerwear in the winter is like amazing. And obviously coats are like you can make such a statement with just one piece of clothing. Um, and it's I think New York in the winter is like a gorgeous backdrop too. Um, so I really like the outerwear that we have at Macy's is amazing. Um, some of my highest performing content has actually also been outerwear. Um, I think the first year I was with the Filmmaker Series, Inc. had this like red fur coat and I shot that and I think I did like $20,000 in sales from that one piece of content because it was just like such a standout piece and the filmmakers did a really great job. And so, yeah, I really think it's highly engaged content because outerwear is such a statement and it's just so fun to shoot. Yeah, I think I remember that red coat. It's beautiful. 
over in um, Williamsburg. It was my last shoot of the day. We were like, should we skip it? Should we not? And I'm so glad we did not skip it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Natalie, what has what is your process for creating content for Macy's Talk? Or do you have any tips on how to prepare for a post? Um, so my process is definitely, I do, especially when it's the vendor sponsored pro, uh, posts, I definitely try to schedule it and make sure I have everything I need. And so I pick a certain day. I know when my hair, I'm a curly girl, my hair doesn't look like this every day. So I have to plan it out, make sure I'm going to have a good hair day, um, you know, where I want to shoot, make sure I have the lighting, the timing correct. So um, I definitely think making lists helps me. So make sure I have this for my product, make sure I have, you know, know what I'm going to post, what I'm trying to say, you know, what is the theme of the post. So definitely making sure I have everything written out in a list so that I don't, you know, you know, I check all the boxes and make sure I have everything done. So that's really, you know, kind of how I go about it. I do want it to be as natural and authentic as possible. So sometimes if it's a product that I know I could use in real life, for example, um, I had one of the BAM shirts that has the attached mask to it. And so um, I, over the pandemic, my grandmother had a birthday party and she's in her 90s. So I was like, OK, this is the perfect day to wear a shirt that has a mask already attached to it. If I'm going to this event, you know, I can pop my mask on and off. So I'm like, OK, while I'm here at the event, I'm also going to shoot this campaign. So it kind of, you know, I want it to flow naturally and be authentic to what's going on in my life, but also want it to be obvious that there's some kind of effort and time put into it. So it's really just about finding that balance. And for me, creating a list, having a calendar, kind of being on a schedule really helps keep me aligned. Awesome. So Adrian, I think before we turn it back over to the WAM crew and open up for any questions, um, and this is just another rapid fire. We're just going to go around the room really quick. Um, the panelists also put together really cool. Their five must have summer summer products that they would want to create content with. Um, so that's going to be something that we are distributing after this call, but I would just love if you guys each would from that list of five that you shared with us, if you can just tell us what your top favorite summer pick is um, and how you'd want to shoot it or what you know how you'd want to create content with it. Um, so we'll start with Michelle. Nora, do you want me to share my screen with um their selections too while everyone talks. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. If if that's cool. Um, so then you can see. Yeah, just what everyone's referring to at least. Yes. So Michelle, do you remember your picks? <laughs> yes, I actually um conveniently wore what the one that I would like to talk about. Um, and you'll see it in the slide as well. But it is this white linen shirt I'm actually wearing right now. Um, it is actually from Men's Tasso. It's a their men's linen shirt, and I swear by this. I know I put five products on there, but honestly, this is the one I would tell everyone to go out and buy. In fact, I think this time of the year, it's actually not too late, but like the inventory is definitely kind of selling through because everyone is wearing these specifically men's. But I think the great thing about Macy's is that you don't necessarily have to shop in one department. I love to kind of look in men's sometime and see if there's pieces that I could also incorporate into my style. I definitely have a menswear kind of tailoring influence style. Um, right now, though, it's definitely being worn more casually. I just I kind of almost look at it as like a casual um, blazer replacement and it's super lightweight. It breathes in hot weather. I mean, this is like my go to vacation shirt. So um, yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this. They come in a lot of fun colors, but I think white is kind of the most classic. And um, I think the bigger, the better as well. I really like the oversized um, look with it to kind of layer it over top. Awesome. Um, great. Thank you. Natalie McNeil, you want to tell us about your top pick amongst your group here? Yes, so uh, my top pick would have to be the Vanilla Body Scrub by Urban Hydration. So Urban Hydration, the company was a part of the workshop here at Macy's. I know Natalia has mentioned that already. Um, it's the vendor development program we have for diversity. Um, so I love Urban Hydration because you know it's focused on hydrating our skin because our skin needs moisture and the body scrub is great for the summer because we're out in the sun a lot but more than our skin and our body needing moisture or urban hydration really focuses on the world and in every product you buy helps to donate a gallon of water to a company or community that has a lack of water so i think it's a great company that is 
focus on something greater than just ourselves, but it is important to have that self-care that I mentioned before to hydrate your skin and nourish your body, but also, you know, use that self-love that you're giving yourself to do something greater. And so by purchasing an urban hydration product, you are, you know, contributing to that greater good of donating water because 29% of the world doesn't have access to clean water, which is still in this day and age to me is mind blowing. And it's so unfortunate. So it's just amazing that Macy's is a part of a company that does something for the greater good. So that's why I picked Urban Hydration. Oh, that's a great pick. Um, we'll go back up top to the PDF. And Jill, do you want to? My God, well, that's such a hard product to follow. None of mine support like global <laughs> clean water distribution. But um, I would, you know, like I shop for myself all the time and I've like always shopped for myself. But now that I have a little girl, I'm like obsessed obsessed with kids clothes and I never knew quite the range and spectrum of what was available um and Penelope was a winter baby so I'm actually very excited for all of the swim opportunity um <laughs> this summer on vacation and at the beach and at pool so um I picked this little like swimsuit set for her with that it came with a hat um for sun protection too and I'm actually like super excited to shoot some like mommy and me swimsuit content um, talking about how, you know, how we talk to ourselves as women affects how our children hear um, and think about themselves. So I'm excited for that content this summer. So mommy and me bikini content coming soon. <laughs> Oh my God, I love it. As a parent, I'm obsessed with kids stuff too. So I totally get that. <laughs> I like um, never knew I would be. And now I'm also like working with the kids team to help cute. provide feedback on the kids assortment at Macy's. Oh, cute. I love it. Yeah. Okay. And Natalia, do you want to share your favorite pick amongst your group? Sure. I'm really torn between Unsun Cosmetics Tinted Sunscreen and Earth's Nectar as my top pick. Um, I think I've been big on the on the self care um, during this pandemic, so I will go with the the Earth's Nectar um, just because I feel like curls are one very difficult to deal with in general. Um, but in the summer, like at least my hair gets it's like between the salt water and you know the sun and all these other things, it really dries out. And I I found that Earth's Nectar um, Hair Therapy Trio to be really fantastic. Um, they have like a mint in their in their products and it's really refreshing one like just because it cools you off like it, it tingles so i love that about the product um and it's really hydrating i find that it really does keep my curls hydrated um throughout the summer i use it all year round but in the summertime i i definitely do like the whole treatment i leave the conditioner in there you know for a couple extra minutes or sometimes i'll like clean the house and i'll like leave it in there you know um soaking for a couple minutes um but Unsun Cosmetics comes in at a very, very close second as my top pick because it doesn't give that chalky, you know, like look to your skin and they have a really broad range. Um, so it doesn't matter how light or skin or dark your skin is, um, you don't have to like suffer through that awful, you know, chalky look. So I would say those are my, my two top picks. Amazing. Awesome. And they're both by Macy's alumni. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Okay, so I'm going to turn it back over to the WAM group. I've been answering all the questions in the chat, so I'm not sure if there's any more out there. Um, we also have our Macy's style crew at Macy's.com um, inbox in case anybody wants to email us if you think of something after the chat. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you guys. Thank you all so much. Thank you to the panelists. Thank you, Nora and Adrian. You guys are all great. Um, I think we all learned a lot and really like inspired to um, just create content and it can be done in so many various different ways. Um, we don't have to be as cool in metallic boots as Michelle is, but we all aspire <laughs> to be. I'm also from Florida, so I, like I know I know the pain of taking that photography <laughs> out there. Um, but <laughs> we will send out actually that um, it's going to be a PDF. It'll link to everything, um, and it'll actually have everybody's um, Instagram handles attached to it. I just went in and fixed it, so when we send it out via email to the um, to those who attended or didn't attend today, they can kind of click through. You can see some of that great product, some of that great workshop product, some of that cute baby product. I just became the buyer at, for baby. So any feedback you have, Jill, Nora, 
you can send it over to me. Um, and then just some Wham um, update, like upcoming events. So we have a burnout management event coming up, in, I believe two weeks. And then our breakfast series is back for July, um, and we'll have Heather Barrow joining us. So um, we'll also send out those sign up links within the same email, so you're not inundated with a with a ton of emails as a PDF. And then if you actually follow um, Wham on Instagram, so Woman at Macy's, I've also linked. Everybody um, who's on the call today, I've, I've um, put all of their Instagram um, profiles within the story. So you can kind of click through and follow if you want um, and follow everyone's journey. But thank you, everybody, for joining us this morning. And um, I hope everybody has a great day. Awesome. Thank you, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.